Coming out of Brooklyn, New York, Tyrone Williams, along with Mr. Magic, was responsible for creating the biggest platform in hip-hop in the mid-80s called Mr. Magic's Rap Attack on WBLS in New York City. That one hip-hop show was responsible for generating millions of listeners across the tri-state area and launching the careers of most legends and icons we revere today. Also known as Fly Tie, and was the founder and owner of Cold Chillin' Records, who launched the careers of Roxanne Shante, MC Shan, Biz Marquis, Big Daddy Kane, and Kooji Rap, to name a few. In this exclusive two and a half hour sit down, Fly Ty Williams will break down his career, his thoughts on music, and will definitely cause some controversy on his thoughts about Leo Cohen, Russell Simmons, and Andre Harrell. He has some incredible stories about the music industry that involve guns, drugs, and violence. Here's a snippet of what's to come. That was his friend, and that was his, Russell's biggest artist, was Super Rhymes was for a minute bigger than Curtis. Right. They used to call him Super Rhymes. All right, but his name was Jimmy Spicer. Right. So anyway. You're uh, getting 1500 now. I'm getting 1500 but I don't want to manage nobody. Right. I want to be a... War correspondent. <laughs> I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Uh, but Magic Keith, now, now we're about to stand down the ferry. We see these guys rapping at the ferry. Rap, a sing song you rap. They call Dr. Rock and the Force MCs. Okay. We take them, we end up taking them to Tommy Boy. All right. And during a break in the studio, they sing it. In the sunshine, let me hold you, baby, all night. Let me touch you in the moonlight. Let me love you, gonna make you all mine. Me and Mads can tell me, look at each other. Shoot, they can sing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I need to sing. No, we rappers. We want to rap. This is just a magic coming with an idea called Hip Hop Dua. It gives, it gives them a song called Let Me Love You. Let me love you in the moon time. Let me love you. So, and there's a rap and a singing in there. So that's right. like how they, they start. Then they end up getting tears and right. love is a house and tender love. And, right. You know. uh, so I'm managing them. But then their father comes. I want to manage my boys. He thought he was Joe Jackson. <laughs> he but he but, but it's Bob Lundy is his name. Right. But I understood. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, at first, you know, he wasn't involved. But listen, that's his sons. And I was like, once again, I didn't want to do it anyway. So he did it. So, um, now we're making deals. Magic is taking the record companies and they're giving us cheddar. <laughs> right, right. So now that 750 or 2150 <laughs> ain't, 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 ain't what you want no more. We, we, we get, I'm, we're getting cheddar from the, the record labels love us. Well, what were you getting kind of back then at that time? You could make Whatever we wanted. Really? You named your, well, we, that's I mean, how hot rap was, where you could just go in. That's how hot magic and, was. Right. And I was putting, rap, magic wouldn't take records. Right. I was doing it. Right. So once they realized, oh, well, magic asked for the magic. Now imagine magic, I'm producing the show. Right. Imagine Marley, records are coming to me. So the key for your success was, y'all had the radio station right. to play the music. Right. So y'all give them the deal, and we got the numbers. Right, and, they, and whoever we told to take a deal, the record label was silent. Because right. they know one thing for sure. Radio is coming. Right. Right, <laughs> right. right. know that. Right. All right. And I saw Tom Silverman a couple years ago. Tom Silverman was the owner of Tommy. And he said, Ty, there's one thing that all labels knew about the rap attack. If Mr. Magic played the record, it was guaranteed at least 60,000 sales within a couple of years. 
guarantee. Now, people talk about platinum and gold and all that like that. Like, it wasn't that. If a label sold 40,000 records, they were happy. Right. If they sold 100,000, it was a big party. Right. The biggest gangster in my office was Lenny Fischelberg. Lenny who? Lenny Fischelberg, my partner. He was the biggest gangster in my office. I had to keep him from killing Ace. Begged him not to kill him. He was going to, Ace put a bullet on his desk one day. You don't know, Lenny rolls with Morris Levy. You he even know, Morris Levy's the biggest Jewish gangster there. He was like, Lefty Boko or something like that, all right? That's Morris Levy. And Joe Robinson, black and white. The record industry, the majors were terrified of him. What was his name? Morris Lee. Oh, I know you said yeah. Joe Robinson. Joe Robinson was Sugar Hill. Oh, okay. But they, before Sugar Hill, they had the Moments, the Ozzy Brothers, Blue Magic, all, and his wife Sylvia was an artist. Right. All right. But him and Morris Levy was boys. Mm. He, he ran the black side, Morris ran the white side. And the major labels was, let me tell you what, MCA? They used to press everything MCA had. Mm. If MCA made it, they made it. And it was, it was <laughs> but Joe and I, one time I was in Capitol Records, visiting Dave Wood. And Joe, wake up. And Joe called his office. And Dave Wood got terrified. So, so I talked to him. So I said, Joe Robinson? Put him on the phone. And all Joe wanted to do was congratulate him on the MC Hammer success. Right. But they feared Joe Robinson and Morris Levy. Wow. Lenny Fischelberg was their man. And Ace put a bullet on his desk. I had to beg them, please. He just didn't know what he's doing. Come on, son. You think you're from Brownsville? That means nothing. Right. Just the, the whole, at, and that time, the mu music game was straight up gangsters all the way through. Right. And not, and they were just, you be coming outside, somebody shoot you in the head. Right. That's what that was. And it wasn't that you, you thought you was a tough guy, man, please. Let's, so. Let me ask you this question. What happened to the black CEO in the early, in the early, in the late 80s, you had the black CEOs like yourself, Russell, I can tell you what happened to him. Andre, and then in the early 90s, we had another set. And now it's like I can tell you what happened to the black CEO. Well, tell me real quickly. The artists had inferiority complexes. If you was white with a suit and tie on, you could jerk them all day. If you was black and really trying to help them, they ain't believe you. Right. Simple. Suge Knight got played like hell. Mm. All right, come on. If you was white, that all the if you was a white with a suit and tie, they'd give you that, they would let you do fuck and never say nothing bad about you. I remember when Flash left Sugar Hill to go to a lecture. I said, you're going to get dicked down now, buddy. <laughs> a lecture, they're going to get you good. You ain't talking about them. Come on. So the, the, the reason the black CEO started, stopped, because the black artists had inferior. I had never in my life, I come from Bedford Stops. Who was black power on God? Right, <laughs> right. Right. I'd never seen nothing in my life where black people Running to the white man saying, save me, save me. I never, and that's what they were doing. Right. Running the majors. Leaving the guys who put themselves on the line for you. Right. I never saw that before. You soft. You booty. To me, I ain't got no respect for you. Come on, seriously? So Not all the success that you had in the music industry and all the people that you helped, you say you'll never go back into that business Ever. again? Not in the record. I never liked the record business anyway, to be honest with you. I like radio. Right. So will you do something in radio? I do something in radio. My daughter and my son is there. So I'm doing something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, we And when we, is the book coming? It's coming. I'll let you know. It's Thank coming. you, my brother. Not, not just a book, everything. There's a bunch of stuff coming. I can't I really tell listen, you now. I, I, listen. And, and, and listen here. I remember the meeting we had. I right. figured out another way to include you in what I'm doing. I appreciate All right. it. But, I appreciate you. You know, I, 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 I've just, I have a, um, I'm going to hold you to it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I said it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I said it, that's it. I, you know, don't, don't be like, I ain't going to be like my grandmother. <laughs> Man, you said it a hundred times. <laughs> but listen, it's just been good. You know, it's been good. And, right. um, this is the, and, and, and everything I said, if this is the bottle, it was this much. Trust me, I <laughs> know I, it is. 
That's a lot. I know. All right. I know. But I do appreciate you giving me the time and and the experience mm -hmm. to do it. I really do appreciate it, man. I love you for that too, yes, man. Because you could have gave this to anybody, oh, but no, you gave no. it to me. Absolutely. Appreciate you. All right. So it's whatever at that time. Later on. Later on in life. Now you're looking back. I'm looking back. Everybody talking. We ain't, none of us got royalty checks. Right. When? Right. I ain't never got a $25,000 advance. I never got a $50,000 publishing, $100,000 publishing. Nothing. What, what you know how many records I did? Talk to me about the records you worked on with this. Every record. <laughs> Produce, co-produce everything. Me, it, it's me and Biz there all the way. Ain't nobody else. And, and the people that it is somebody else is loosely 45 King, um, you know, uh, Todd, Salam, Remy. You know what I'm saying? They done work on our albums. Large Professor, yes. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, it's all me and Biz. Ain't no other time when they, they, since the work's been the work. <laughs> since like 83, 82. No, since the work been since since the work been the work. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that's family. So even right. when Molly was doing the records, we were coming up with some of the ideas at the crib. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? And Biz would go to Molly's house. Even when we did the first Make the Music that never came out before, Molly got a copy of that now. He's, Supposed to be sending it to me. me okay, yeah. exactly. It was two kids rapping from around my way, and Biz was doing the beatbox on the hooks, like you right. know. So make the music with your mouth, Biz, right. and then Biz do you know, and then make the music with right. boom, right. you know, doing it. But that record never came out, so Biz went back and did it over. Solid. You can't so, front on that one. So, <laughs> well, I guess specifically, and I'm just asking specifically if you could remember. I can I remember. Yeah. Well, um, that first album. The first album. Okay. Classic. Classic. Everything on Everybody it. footprints on it. Everybody right. fingerprints is on it. Right. Me, Kane, Biz, Swan. Right. Everybody's fingerprints on it, but it looks like me and Biz just puppets. Right. You know, you see produced by Marley Marl, written by Kane. Right. Not so, true. Ooh.